Today's lesson is uh, just a little bit of theory behind uh, the introduction of the organic uh, chemistry unit. And we're going to be looking at uh, various organic compounds. So let's look at introducing organic compounds. An organic compound is a molecular compound of carbon that are structured from a backbone that consists of just two kinds of atoms. And these are going to consist of carbon and hydrogen. Compounds that are formed from carbon and hydrogen are called hydrocarbons. Um, when we looked uh, way back in one of the lessons on combustion, complete and incomplete combustion reactions, we talked about, um, there's a little introduction on, uh, on hydrocarbons. So what we're going to be looking at pretty much is how the uh, structures of various hydrocarbons exist in um, pretty much our everyday surroundings. Sugars, starches, and other carbohydrates are natural organic compounds. Also included in this list are fats, proteins, the enzymes that help us digest our foods. Okay, are also uh, formed from organic compounds, and these organic compounds contain carbons and hydrogens. Right? We look at uh, carbohydrates like sugars um, that consist of C6H12O6, right? Carbons and hydrogens. Clothes made of wool, silk, or cotton are also considered natural organic compounds. The molecules of DNA in the nuclei of our cells is also comprised of organic compounds that contain carbons and hydrogens. Organic compounds are carbon-containing compounds with the exceptions of two common ones, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. Right? Notice, there's, even though um, organic compounds involve um, the carbon atom, right? but um, CO2 and CO are not considered uh, part of these organic compounds. Carbon is one of the most versatile elements on Earth. Carbon atoms are able to bond in short or long chains or in ring structure. So one thing that we're going to see in the, the coming lessons is how does carbon get bonded, right? We know that carbon contains four valence electrons, as we're going to um, see in the upcoming lesson. It contains four uh, bonding sites in which uh, other atoms, particularly uh, other carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms, will bond covalently with, uh, with the central atom being carbon. So what we'll see is we'll see you know, small compounds like CH4 here with methane. Um, we will have... Um, a long chain of carbons, um, similar to uh, to glucose, that exists in a ring form, right? Where these corners, as we're going to see in future lessons, um, consist of carbon atoms at each one of these vertices. Ninety percent of all chemical compounds in the world are considered organic in nature. Hydrocarbons are organic compounds, again, containing carbon and hydrogen atoms, just to reiterate uh, what a hydrocarbon contains. Organic compounds, natural and synthetic. It was believed that all uh, organic compounds were considered natural, but ultimately it was uh, found that we can, in fact, synthesize, we can make uh, organic compounds. Organic compounds on Earth were only believed to occur naturally. Following scientists, though, German scientists in 1828, Friedrich Wohler synthesized urea, which was an organic compound that is found in uh, mammal urine and produced by the kidneys. And it's from an inorganic compound called ammonium cyanate. So it was, in fact, believed that, hey, well, you know, uh, organic compounds are only natural in nature, but what was discovered was with the inorganic, or as we can say almost non-living, uh, compound of ammonium cyanate, we were able to actually produce, synthesize urea, which is an um, organic compound. Chemists invent more than 250,000 new synthetic organic chemicals each year. Chemists can synthesize organic compounds to make products such as life giving drugs, toys, medicines, medicines such as painkillers, cough syrups, antidepressants. Uh, things like perfumes, food flavorings, materials such as rubber and plastics, 
and fabrics such as nylon, rayon, and polyester. Photosynthetic organisms used uh, energy from the sun to convert carbon dioxide and water into oxygen and carbohydrates, such as sugar, starches, and cellulose. Very common for these photosynthetic uh, organisms, right? The, these producers, these plants that undergo photosynthesis. Right? So what they're doing is they are pretty much converting light energy from the sun, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, uh, as well as water to produce glucose, C6H12O6, and oxygen. Right? So these carbohydrates that they produce, these are organic compounds that they're producing. When these organisms died, they settled to the bottom of lakes, rivers, ocean beds, along with other organic matter. Bacterial activity removed most of the oxygen and nitrogen from the organic matter, leaving behind mainly hydrogen and carbon. Right? This is really important with pretty much the, um, the, the mining of fossil fuels, as we're going to see. Over time, the organic matter was covered uh, with layers of mud and sediments, and as these layers upon layer built up, heat and tremendous pressure transformed the sediments into shale and the organic matter into solid, liquid, and gaseous materials. Right? So, and these are the materials that uh, that are considered fossil fuels, right? Coal, oil, natural gases that pretty much society depends on today, right? We depend heavily on our fossil fuels. And because of that dependency, um, you know, we are kind of putting that kind of strain that we are uh, on the planet. Sources of hydrocarbons. Sources of hydrocarbons include wood, which is the products that result from the fermentation of plants and fossil fuels. One fossil fuel in particular, petroleum, is the main source of hydrocarbons that are used for fuels and many other products such as plastics and synthetic fabrics. Petroleum, sometimes referred to as a crude oil, is a complex mixture of solid, liquid, and gaseous hydrocarbons. Okay, so just kind of going through a little bit of the, the, um, the history and theory behind um, organic compounds. And what we're going to see in the upcoming lessons is um, pretty much the different types of ways that we can uh, demonstrate um, hydrocarbon uh, formulas in, um, in terms of uh, when drawing them, right? Formulas just like I tried showing earlier on. And, um, and also how to go about naming various hydrocarbons, because there is a uh, specific way to go about naming, and these are going to be uh, in the upcoming lessons.